Hello everyone, welcome again in third lecture of our series Vibration with MATLAB. In this lecture, we will study the free and force vibration response of a single degree of freedom damped system. So here is our system where I am showing the mathematical model of your damped system. This is your spring, this is your viscous damping and this is your mass. And if I will see the equation of motion of this system, it will be mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to zero in case of free vibration or a harmonic force in case of force vibration. So when we are having a damping in our system, the damping force is defined by the a damping constant multiplied by the velocity of your mass. When the mass will vibrate, we can write that the displacement, velocity and acceleration as x, x dot and x double dot. So your viscous force is actually proportional to the velocity of your system. However, when we say the spring force, the spring force is proportional to your displacement value. Now, in case of damped vibration, before we go and talk about the MATLAB code, let's see what are the different important aspects we must know before we write and interpret any code. So, in case of damped vibration, when we see the free vibration, we define a critical damping term. That is 2 under root km and we also define a damping ratio which is the ratio of the damping of your system divided by this critical damping. So please understand the critical damping is not your external damping. It is the property of your system. As we can see in this formula, it is actually defined by the value of K and M not by the actual damping of your system. And why it is required? Because we observe different types of damped vibration. When we see that the zeta is greater than 1, the vibration is generally defined as the over damped vibration. And how we see the response? If I am giving a displacement to my system, the system will move but it will not vibrate instead of that after certain period of time, the mass will go back to its original position. When the zeta is zero, which we call the critically damped condition, in this case, when I will displace my mass, the mass will quickly come to its mean position. That means if I compare the over damped and the critical damped condition, in critical damped condition, the mass will reach to mean position relatively in less time. The third, which is actually the our uh, area of interest, that is the under damped vibration. When the zeta value, that is the damping ratio value less than 1, we will observe oscillation. However, the oscillation amplitude will decay with respect to time and why it is happening? Because we are having damping in our system. Damping actually a dissipating mechanism which dissipate the vibration energy in terms of some heat energy or other type of energy. Therefore, the vibration energy decay and the amplitude reduces and reach to a zero displacement value. In case of force vibration, the vibrations are actually defined by a set of transient as well as the steady state vibration. How we can visualize the force vibration? So this is your system again and now I am applying a harmonic force of F0 sin omega Ft where omega F is your excitation frequency. And here particularly I am talking about the under damped condition where my zeta is less than 1. What is zeta? Zeta is the damping divided by the critical damping of your system. So in this case when we are giving some force to our system both natural excitation as well as the force excitation try to exist in the system. So what happened? Because of the damping, the natural vibration decay with respect to time. However, the force vibration remain as it is in your system. So finally, as a superposition of the, these two vibration, we observe this type of vibration. Where the initial period where both the vibrations are presented in your system is known as the transient period and later on when we are only having the force vibration case that is defined by the steady state response. So if this vibration actually with respect to the natural frequency of your system that is defined by K by M. Actually this is not with the natural frequency it is with the damped natural frequency 
which is defined by 1 minus zeta square omega n. But as the zeta is very very small, we can closely say that the vibration frequency is equivalent to the natural frequency. I am not going in the detail of this topic because here our prime focus is to write the MATLAB code. If you are interested, please go and watch my other videos which are exclusively made for the theory of your mechanical vibration. So this why the first one would be with the natural damped natural frequency of your system second vibration which is the force vibration is governed by the omega f so when we see the actual vibration the actual vibration is the combination of two frequency for certain period of time till the time your natural frequency natural vibration will exist in your system you will find the combination but later on the vibration will be only governed by the force and that part is known as the steady steady response However, the initial part is known as the transient response. So we are also expecting that when we will make a MATLAB code and if my zeta is less than 1 and I am giving certain force excitation, I will expect that the vibration will also show similar characteristic that initially I will see the transient response and later on I will find the steady state response. The last thing before we go and see the MATLAB code is our state space formation. So my equation of motion is mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to f r0 for force and free vibration. I am going to define my velocity as x1 and my displacement as x2 and when I will replace these two variables into my governing equation, I will have now two equations. One equation which is corresponding to my velocity, second corresponding to displacement. Similarly in case of force vibration, these will be my two equation 1 and equation 2. So what is the difference only this f by m term will not exist in free vibration case so instead of having a second order ordinary differential equation i am having two first order ordinary differential equation and to solve these two equation i need simple numerical integration method to get the response first equation will give output as x1 and second will give output as x2 so first will give the velocity second will give the displacement so first let's understand the code line by line later on we will go to the matlab platform and see the response so this is for the free vibration and here is the definition of my problem i am having a spring damper mass system where my spring constant is 2000 newton meter per meter damping let's assume 10 and the mass is 2 kilogram if i am giving some initial displacement 0 and initial velocity of 5 centimeter per second how i will see the response here is my matlab code as the first three lines are the comment line clc and clear all are for command clearing the command window as well as the workspace then i am defining my mass stiffness and damping and making these three constants as the global constant because i have to use these three in my function then this is my initial condition which is defining this is my velocity and this is my displacement i know that my initial condition is defined as the velocity first and the displacement would be in the second position why because my x1 is velocity in my steady space formation and x2 is displacement then i am having standard line which is corresponding to my ode 45 function which is a standard matlab function to solve uh, numerical integration of first order differential equation then this test ode2 is my function which i have created to give my derived equation to ode solver then this is my time variable uh, time vector and this is my initial condition i am moving quickly because we have already seen such program in our last two classes so no need to spend too much time here let's see the response then the important thing will be if i will make the damping so large that my system will become over damped then how the response will look like whether the oscillation will go away and i will only have a displacement and the decay we will see it when we will see the matlab response and then i am having a damping ratio term this line 14 i have especially written here so that whenever i will run my code i will be able to see my zeta value this is my zeta value actually which is the ratio of two damping damping of your system divided by the critical damping and my critical damping is what two under root stiffness and mass so you can see here that damping ratio is c by two square root of km 
and 15 and 18 line are actually plotting your displacement and the velocity here i have added one new command that is the grid on we will see it that in the plot in last two classes we have simply taken this plot command this is your function where you are having your equation and i have written my equation in matrix form so actually it is what the dy is actually having two term one is your first equation that is minus k by m x2 minus c by m x1 and second one is what second one is your x1 and this is the input for your code and these again we are writing it here as a global because we want to take these three constant from our main program so this is your free vibration code in the same line if i will see the force vibration response the same system i am taking here but i instead of giving some initial displacement i am applying one harmonic force f naught sine omega f t and this is my code all uh, all lines are same except i am adding one force term here so my force is f naught sine 2 pi omega f t my excitation frequency for the given case is 12 hertz and the amplitude of force is 5 newton and then i am having my time step my time vector then i am having my initial condition here i am taking my initial condition with some velocity but you can also consider that if you are not giving any velocity as well as displacement these two value will be zero and this is my standard ode45 function where i am giving this test ode3 underscore force as the function uh, in terms of my steady space equation and this is your test ode3 underscore force function where i am having one additional term that is f1 by m because now what is your dy dy is again the same two equation which we have derived for the steady space that is f by m minus k by m x2 minus c by m x1 and the second equation is just x so this 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 function will give you value of velocity and displacement so after looking these two matlab codes let's go to the matlab platform and see the response this is my first code for your free vibration response and uh, i am just giving initial velocity as uh, 5 cm per second and zero initial displacement and this is my function we try to see the response i am running my code and here is my response so you can see that the first figure is corresponding to displacement versus time the second figure is corresponding to your velocity versus time and here you can see the vibration level is decaying with respect to time and becoming close to the zero value similarly your velocity is also becoming close to the zero value but in displace displacement is starting from zero and i have given an initial velocity as five centimeter per second therefore my velocity curve is starting from five centimeter per second and as i said that i am also showing my damping ratio so you can see in the command line this is your damping ratio and the magnitude of damping ratio is 0.0791 so what we already seen that if the zeta value or the damping ratio value is less than one your vibration will be under damped vibration and your response will decay there will be oscillation and the response will decay with respect to time in addition to that using this this graph we can also measure the frequency of oscillation we are expecting that the one oscillation will complete uh, with the natural frequency but as this is the damped vibration let's see what would be your excitation frequency so let's take this marker here put the marker on your graph you will get one value which is corresponding to x value of 0.245 second and your magnitude is 0.00852 similarly you can press alt button and you can select another position let's i am taking another position which is second peak so what is the gap here it is 0.245 it is 0.445 these two peaks are showing the two time instant and if you will take the difference of these two time instant you will get your time period that that is coming out 0.2 and if you will inverse it your frequency is coming 5 hertz so as i said that since the zeta value is very very small and we know that your damned natural frequency is what your damned natural frequency is 1 minus zeta square omega n and this zeta is in my case 0 0.079 
so you can expect that your damped natural frequency will be close to your natural frequency and that is what we are observing here that my natural frequency or the damped natural frequency are close and its value is around 5 hertz next we can change our damping value and see that if we will increase the damping value so that the system become over damped how the response will look like so this is my code where i am having my c value 10 let's make it 100 and see what will happen with the response value you can see here that your damping ratio is still 0.7906 that means it is less than 1 however the damping is so large you are not able to see oscillation instead of oscillation what is happening you are giving disturbance to your system system is moving and it is closely crossing your mean value you can see here if you zoom here will find that the system is not directly moving to zero value instead of that it is first crossing the zero value and then again moving to the zero value that means still system has capability to capability to oscillate and it is under damped system if i will increase my damping value by 200 so this is your response you can see here that your damping ratio is 1.5881 which is more than one and this is your displacement and you can see that you are not crossing your zero value uh, once you are giving disturbance to your system your amplitude is decaying and closing to the zero value so this is how we can observe that if the damping is increased beyond a value so the system become over damped your response will be just at a disturbance and the zero value after this let's see the force vibration response so this is your force vibration code I am giving a force value which is of 12 hertz excitation and the magnitude is of 5 newton and I am not giving any initial velocity and initial displacement in this case let's see how the response will look like as we have already discussed that in case of force vibration initially there will be a transient period and then you will have the steady state response so this is your output first one is for the displacement second one with the velocity for the velocity and you can see that for initial period you are having some mixed frequency and after two seconds approximately the response become a steady state response and if you will try to measure the frequency of this zone it will be purely your frequency of force vibration but in the initial phase both frequency will exist simultaneously and therefore we are having periodic kind of signal so same we can observe in the velocity plot response is transient and later on we are having steady state response i hope that you have learned that how to write the code for the free and force vibration of a damped system in addition to that you also understand that in case of damping you are having vibration that will be combination of your transient response as well as the steady state response so with this i am closing this session thank you